PC gone mad? Our Eleanor's been finding out. Completely unacceptable. You can always count on a cabbie to say it how it is. And when it comes to political correctness, this lot certainly have a view. As far as today's thing is concerned, you know, I'm a dinosaur. So do you ever find yourself being caught out and worrying and like watching yourself? Uh, not so much worrying yourself, but, you know, I just think, you know, sometimes you just got to... So it's got to be on your game a little bit, you know, in, ca in case someone does take umbrage to what you're saying. It could be quite, quite innocent quite what you say. Yeah. Innocent or not, it turns out political correctness can be traced back to Plato's Republic and more recently to Russia under Lenin and Stalin. But where did the term really come from? Well, one man who should know is John Lee. He's done a PhD and even written a book about political correctness. There is a clear connection with post-Soviet revolutionary talk in the sense that if you correctly interpret historical events, then the revolution will be successful. That does seem to have resonances today in the way people use the term as in towing the political line. If you go forward a few years in Stalinist times, it was very, very important to be able to tow the political right, which is where you get this sense that sometimes people say things that they don't necessarily believe, but if you want to avoid an extended say, stay in a salt mine, it would be the politically correct thing to say. Well, it's certainly got history, and over time its meaning has shifted, but being politically correct isn't popular with everyone. There is nothing good in any sense of form about political correctness. And when people are talking in language that's connected with political correctness, my constituents do not understand what they're saying. And yet at the same time, my constituents want you to be a normal person and talk their language. Political correctness should be kicked out. And of course, if we could abolish the BBC, that would get rid of a lot of political correctness. Typical. Most agree the term politically correct or PC is now often used as a slur, but there are those who still stand up for it. It's a very silly term. It's like health and safety gone mad. It's a way of deriding concerns about use of language and attempting to go on allowing people to use offensive language because it's just trivial and silly. It's not. It's actually a very important issue. A popularist battering ram or a serious set of universal standards. However you see it, we can argue about it until the cabs come home. <laughs> boom, boom. And we're joined now by Zoe Williams of The Guardian. Rod Little, of course, is still here. Let's start. Well, give me your definition of political correctness. I don't... I think it's a ridiculous term. I mean, it's used as a slur by the right on anybody who says these words are discriminatory and they hurt people's feelings. But really, mostly what you're talking about is are you trying to denigrate people on the basis of who they are and what colour they are, or aren't you? So, okay, so that's your that's definition in the sense that political correctness no, my definition is of political meant correctness. to stop that. No, my definition of political correctness is it's just something made up by the Daily Mail. <laughs> OK. It's <laughs> a good view of The Guardian. Um, they both need each other, The Mail and The Guardian, yes, actually. They'd have nothing to write about otherwise. Uh, what's your definition? Well, I mean, I mean, there's some truth in what Zoe says, to be honest. Uh, and I think it's become a much overused term. Um, and, and I get tired of people, it's political correctness gone mad, is, is one of the most boring things that can ever be said, uh, because it tends to miss the main issue. And indeed, some of what, what is called political correctness is in, simply a matter of politeness. I mean, I, I would go along with that. Where it becomes dangerous is where it, where it, uh, where it stops both freedom of thought and also freedom of expression, and that subjects then don't get studied in the sort of depth that they should be studied. The obvious case... Immigration, of I suppose. Well, immigration is one of them. Um, and that was undoubtedly... You're going to say the obvious example is? It's Rotherham. Um, it's Rotherham. Uh, it's Rotherham mm. and, the, and the child abuse uh, cases which now seem to be spiralling so, throughout the country. So you think <laughs> that political correctness was to blame for not doing enough about the abuse of children in Rotherham. I think what people call political correctness was partly to blame. Okay. But in, 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 the, in, the, in the, uh, just one second, in the, in the, both the political, and it's been admitted, you know, uh, the local MPs okay. have admitted. Let me get Zoe's reaction. Well, okay, look, if, there, if what really was going on in Rotherham was a surge of political correctness, you would have had a lot of feminists in there, right, arguing for the rights of girls, not to be ignored by police. So the idea that you had this kind of stranglehold of the left-wingers who were saying, no, we can't say anything about Asian men, it's preposterous. No, I don't think because if those people did exist, they would also be feminists who are against the sexual abuse of girls. No, 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 but, but Secondly, there, there, there's a, 
you know, you could look systemically at Rotherham for all kinds of causes for those, se those cases of sexual abuse. And you could look at the privatisation of children's homes and the fact that all those girls were up there in the first place because they'd been sent to a cheap area from councils that were 200 miles away. Nobody ever but, does. But that wouldn't, but that wouldn't explain why the police did not investigate Well, it, it might explain why there's such a kind of intensification of abuse within a small area. But, but it you wouldn't don't, you explain, don't, but, there, don't but, but the real that. problem in this was not that it was happening, whoever owns the, 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 so the, the law. Yeah, no. The issue was yes. that the police looked okay. the other the way. Now, okay, why, so the police, was that political well, correctness police, or not? Well, it wasn't political correctness because you have a huge precedent for the police looking the other way in cases of rape and sexual abuse. And social a services? A huge precedent. And social the services? social services were saying this all along. No, they weren't. I mean, yeah, they, Most well, of the social services were saying, oh, there are things happening here, but we won't investigate, we won't press too hard. That was the case in Oldham, in Blackburn, in Burnley. That's Berlin. actually not true. The social services on the ground were saying this all along. And if Do you, you read. If you, read so, social, right. if you read social workers' accounts at the time, all they got was opposition. But, you know, to blame the police incompetence on political correctness is to ignore all right, 300 let's move, okay. years The Labour MPs incompetence. who represented Rotherham said Implied it was political correct, correctness. Anne Cryer, talking about the same sort of issue, another Labour MP, has said the political correctness, it has a sort of dampening effect all on right. our ability to get to the heart of problems. That's that, the only point. That's Rotherham. Let's move on to some mm -hmm. rather more trivial examples. Uh, pop star Ellie Goulding was criticised for wearing a Native American <laughs> costume for her Halloween outfit. She was then forced to remove it for her full-length picture uh, and leaving just a close-up of the headdress. Yeah. What, how, what's your view on that? <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, you see, I don't think that is political correctness. I think that there's a, a sort mm. of tranche of maniacs yeah. out there on the internet who are determined to be offended by anything they this see. This is the Twitter lynch mob. This yeah, is the yeah, Twitter yeah. lynch mob. You see, I, I don't okay. think it really offends many people that Ellie Goulding dresses up as, as I don't know if she called it a Red Indian or a Native American. I think oh. the correct term today is First Nation American. Oh. I think All right. right. Well, what's your view on Listen, that? Listen, we've got massive systemic problems of racism in this country and also in America. So you've got, you've got on the one hand, a, a situation where the, you know, there's absolutely no representation for whole races across whole professional echelons. And that's been the case. That's been picked up by Vince Cable, by the, by the High so, Court judges. So she, it was right to no, criticise no, 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 hang on a second, let me finish. And then on the other hand, we've got a load of conversations about whether or not we're allowed to say something yes. insensitive. Now, surely we can make the connection between habitually denigrating and laughing at people and discriminating against them in professional life. Right. I'm Surely still not sure if say... she was right or wrong to wear this headdress. Oh, well, I don't care what pop stars. All right. Pop stars well, what about this? Michael <laughs> Heseltine used the word handicapped when referring to people with disabilities on any questions. Was that wrong? Well, Michael Heseltine is wrong on everything. So I would say that he uses the word handicapped, but in it is That's dripping. What word would you use? That was Heseltineist. Oh. Uh, what would you use? I would have said disabled, I guess. Would you have said disabled, but not what differently would you have said? Uh, I'd have tried to use handicapped. I'd have groped towards Look, handicapped. You people are just determined not to see we this in people. context. Yeah, all of you people apart from you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Are determined <laughs> not to see this in context. The context of the Conservatives is Lord Freud saying disabled people, let's face it, we all know who we're talking about, aren't worth the minimum wage. The <clears> context <throat> is persistent cuts yeah. to disability benefit. Uh, so of course when Michael Heseltine says something in which his contempt mm -hmm. is audible, people object. No, I don't, so no, they're no, not but actually objecting that, to the word. But, but they're was, objecting to the person. No, but I respect Zoe. I don't want to be in the position of standing up for. Me. No, 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 I don't actually. Do I? Sorry, apologies. <laughs> uh, I apologise yeah, for that. Apologize. No, I don't think that Michael Heseltine. Uh, I, I don't think that the word handicapped revealed his contempt. Now, it, it, I didn't hear the rest of what he had to say, but handicapped is a word which would have come from the decades you, in which he was at his but magisterial height. I tell you what it, I tell you what it reveals. So, it, I tell you, you know. what it reveals is that he doesn't ever listen to disabled people or disabled um, you know organisations that? because then they would have said to him, "We we but use really these we use that, the, we use these words for these reasons." And if people completely persistently refuse to, to you know call people what scope call them or what they call themselves, you've got to assume that they're just not interested, but does they're it just mean not using Ill, the imagination. Does it mean people are wanting to be ill-meaning? I mean, you're, you're sort of looking at the motivation behind a word. Are you reading too much I into think, it? I think Michael Hesseltine probably just doesn't care. But, you know, doesn't that's care a, what? He doesn't care whether people are offended. He just doesn't care. But, you I know, hope that's right. the case. That, says, that, that, that says quite a lot about what the... We, know, we, we shall see. Mr Hesseltine's not here to defend himself, <laughs> and, and you've not really studied his attitude, so you're going a bit out on a limb there. But we'll leave it for now. Thank you very much. Oh. Mm, thank you.